share your experience with us. What are those disruptions that you see in Nigeria's agriculture space? Thank you very much. So, yes, uh, technology is having a big impact all over the world and Nigeria is not excluded. Uh, what we're seeing is uh, a lot of private sector development in technology, like uh, what we have with uh, drones, companies like Bit Drone that, that won the, the, the prize at our recently concluded Tech Fest. What they do is you have drones that are monitored externally, they map the land, they do surveys, they monitor the performance of the plants, monitor even soil quality, monitor quality, uh, uh, presence of pests and diseases. So that's a lot of technological interruption that will take us to several years ahead of where we need to be in terms of agricultural production. Because most of our farmers are smallholder farmers doing farming in the old way. Technology is going to now change all of that and is already doing it. But well, is this affordable technology? Because, I mean, you made a good point there, and I was going to bring that up, that, I mean, the bulk of our farmers of farming in the country are done by small-scale farmers and in rural, uh, area, remote rural areas. So I'm thinking, how affordable or what is the access level for these farmers and when it comes to this kind of technology that you've just talked about? Interestingly, it is. It's as low as 3,500 per hectare for a, a drone to map your farm. That, that cheaply, so uh, every farmer can afford that. So it and most of our farmers have one hectare to five hectares, really. That's the preponderance of our farmers' land size. So it's very, very affordable, incidentally. What about, uh, let's talk about the role of banks, just like, like Diamond Bank, you mentioned uh, the drones, but what specifically is a bank like Diamond Bank doing, or how are you using technology uh, to help uh, boost agriculture? For us as, as financiers, that kind of technology would reduce the information asymmetry that comes with dealing with smallholder farmers, for instance, because we can pay for the service of a survey for a group of farmers in the remotest of locations, and it helps us therefore extend our footprints to lending to smallholder farmers because this technology offers monitoring, it offers a slew of activities which on our own, sitting here in our various branches, we don't have the capacity to do it. That's on the one, that's on the user side. But as a supporter of the value chain also, we fund some of these developers of these technologies to develop the technology and commercialize the technology. So for instance, like I said, at the last Tech Fest, we did, there was a competition on technology for, for agri and then Bid Drone, which was specifically for agriculture, won the five million naira prize. And we're already discussing on how we're going to work on smallholder farmers in various locations with them because before now we won't be able to do it on our own. But now that is the private sector end of things. What about the government? What role should the government be playing in all of this? Well, government's role really, it's about creating the enabling environment. So now a lot of uh, technology is around by private inst uh, institutions and individuals. There needs to be regulation. There needs to be standardization so that there's transparency and there is honesty and you can, there's regulation. So government just needs to create that enabling environment and the laws that are required to make this work and work well for everybody in the value chain, especially the larger majority who are smallholders who can easily be cheated when they don't understand what's going on. Now what about the level of awareness? I mean, I, I know that, I mean, this is profitable for the smallholder farmers and you said that there is some a significant penetration in terms of the number of smallholder farmers that have access and are actually using it. But in terms of the general, uh, general awareness and the, the appreciation of uh, the benefits that technology has on improving uh, their life, the, the produce as it were, or the, of their crops, would you say that uh, to a large extent there is great awareness about how technology could change the way they farm? Not enough at all. It's just a very small percentile that know. So for that reason, there's a lot of awareness that needs to be created by all the value chain support entities. Government can do that, take that role, and highlight what is available, where and how. And then private individuals also can do that. And on our part, the, um, those that we are partnering with, we are going to do a lot of uh, uh, engagements. But really, 
it's very, very little that understand what is available and how it can impact. So there's a lot of work to be done in that uh, regard. Would you, would you like to see, I mean, should that also come from a policy perspective? Do we need policy to help drive that? I, yes, I think so. It should be a, a complete package, including the regulation, including the what is to be done to, be, to make awareness and adoption possible. Yes, I agree, it will drive it faster. If it's left the way it is, it will be on a case-by-case -case basis and it will take much, much longer to be able to get it to where it's supposed to be and really have the impact we want it to have on our agricultural production and the quality of food, availability of food, and reduction of labor in terms of our agricultural production.